Welcome back to the Talking with Taylor podcast. I'm your host, Taylor, where we talk with anyone about anything, and hopefully everyone around the table will listen. And I am very excited today uh, to have a very special guest. Uh, this guy's name is Mr. Russell Estes, and I met uh, Russell several years ago. I spoke at, uh, I think it was a car show or something for, for is that right, yeah, Russell? Yeah, yeah so. Bring bash. Yes, yes, a, a few years ago, and uh, it's pretty cool how uh, God brings everyone together, but Russell has a, uh, has a new book out and a first time author, but it's really done well and it's got a lot of traction and I'm excited to help promote it today. And so the name of the book is called Southern Roots and um, it's wherever books are sold, you can get it. And so Mr. Russell, uh, how is everything going? Oh, it's going good. Uh you know, like you said, I got my feet wet with this book and really didn't know where it was going. But, yeah, you know, it's, it's amazing when you when you do things and kind of put it out there and you're not doing it for anything but for the glory of God, yeah. how it kind of takes off. And, and that's where this went. This this whole thing, this whole project was how can I glorify God through what I consider maybe one of my talents? Yeah. And, you know, let's put it out there and see where it goes. And, uh, you know, I want to say that I took it and ran with it, but I didn't. I took it and gave it to God, and he ran with it. Oh, man. And uh, here we are. Here we that, are. That's incredible. Uh, it, it really is. And like you said, I, I've seen it. Uh, I got my copy at Barnes & Noble uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, they, I, it was the last one there. So hopefully they're going to order some more, and people can go, uh, go there and pr purchase it. But uh, the subtitle here is Lessons from a Southern Upbringing. And so uh, talk to us a little bit about what was your inspiration for writing uh, Southern Roots? Well, growing up in North Alabama, we grew up with, with means of what we had that we needed. We didn't right. have a lot of wants, yeah. but we had everything that we needed. Now, sometimes those needs that came about uh, – hard way we had some hardships yeah but who don't you know we right. uh we took those opportunities that we had and we turned them into what we can make on to make a living um uh, the book contains 11 uh stories that details a lot of that upbringing some of the things that i witnessed myself some of the things i went through um uh, everything i was personally involved with at some point with each of these stories mm -hmm. now how i decided to put it into a book it went back to a few years ago when my mother was uh, battling dementia and I was her caregiver. Mm. And that was some trying times, it was, it was tough. And uh, I began writing as my way of coping. I, I never have been one to sit down and be able to just discuss my feelings with anyone and, right. and try to get comfort that way. But I could write, I could journal, get those feelings out and it kind of helped me. And I, I started detailing mom's uh, battle with dementia. Mm -hmm. It turned into writing for an online support group of mm. uh, dementia caregivers. Yeah. And uh, just by chance, a couple of people in there were authors, uh, had one, uh, one guy that actually worked for a publishing company and they kind of gave me a little encouragement and, and told me, hey, you need to put some of this work out. You know, yeah. we, we're getting something from it. Uh, I got some real good reviews from my online stuff. So, you know, I've started doing it then. Mom was, uh, she was still in her battle and, you know, we were going through it and stories were still developing. I, I was still learning everything about what I wanted to put in this book. So I started journaling, I started writing, I started a manuscript and, uh, you know, about six to eight months into this, uh, mom lost her battle to dementia, but she won her battle of eternity. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that kind of set me back. I, I kind of hit a spell there. Well, I didn't want to do anything. You know, that was, that was my mom. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so I, I kind of, I kind of looked at everything. I said, okay, I'll finish this later. Let me get back to real life. Let me get back to the world and uh, go about it that way. Well, that time came, I sat down, I started writing again and nothing was falling into place like it was before. It just seemed like, you know, that you've always heard writer's block. Well, I had, I had mental block. I mean, I couldn't think my way through anything. I couldn't even, you know, open up Word. I would, I'd sit down looking at it. Google Docs, I'd sit down and look at it yeah. and just wasn't going anywhere. So I said, okay, I'm going about this wrong. Uh, one of my favorite verses in the Bible is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hmm. You know, I started breaking that down. Uh, I can do all things. Do, do I look at it like, yeah, can I do this? Can I do this? You know, mm -hmm. I can do all things who strengthens me. You know, yeah, you know, put my words out there, make them strong. But then when I looked at the middle of that through Christ, That's you right. know, it, it talked to me differently. You know, when we do things through Christ, for Christ, and with Christ, 
everything comes in. Well, I sat back down with that in mind and I was like, let's give this to God and see where it goes. Mm. And when I'd done that, I went back and I read the entire manuscript and I put a lot into this. Mm. I hit delete. Mm. I, I felt like that I had started writing that for myself. I had started writing that with things that, that I had been through, things that I had done. Wow. When I should have been writing the whole time of those experiences I had, what God had done for me through those experiences. Wow. So I hit delete and I started over and everything flowed. Man, it was mm. just so crazy. I mean, I, I sat down and wrote two or three stories out, you know, within a couple of days. Mm. And over the course of about two and a half months, the book was done. Wow. I sent it off, got it edited, you know, and within three months, here it is in print. But, you know, I'd spent years, I spent a couple of years, almost three years working on this book. But when I sat down and done it through Christ, he's the one that strengthened the book. He strengthened my ideas. He strengthened the words to it. I hit delete, man. It was crazy. I was like, yeah. I can't believe I'm doing this, but I hit delete. And here it goes. I mean, that's uh, I mean, that's incredible. And hopefully people that read this will uh, know that, uh, that you did, you know, you were uh, the perspective you had from the get go from the beginning uh, changed and hopefully they'll look through the book with that lens. And, and that's a, that's incredible. That's an incredible story of how you wrote it. And, and in two months, the, the book was done, it flowed and it went, uh, went well. And so you said you have 11 stories that you take. And, and so the book is 11 chapters and, um, and you take these stories. What is, uh, we're not going to, I don't want to give too much away. We want people to go buy the book and read it. But what is, um, what is one story in the book that uh, kind of give like a little, uh, uh, just a highlight of that story so that readers can know what they're getting into? Sure. Each story deals with uh, something that we deal with on a daily basis and how we can put God's uh, work to use. Uh, a lot of compassion in it, a lot of things that we deal with. Uh, talks about death some in the book, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, this past year we, we've all dealt with some form of death in some way. Uh, right. I know you've had, your, your book was inspired a lot uh, with your brother. Yep. Uh, you know, we have to deal with that. That's stuff we have to deal with. Uh, one of the one of my favorite stories in the book, though, it's the longest one in the book. It's called Carl. Hmm. Uh, now, Carl is a is, is a guy. This is a this is a, a true story. That's growing up. We you know everybody has somebody in your town. You just kind of avoid mm -hmm. a little different. Yeah. Uh, don't mean they're bad. They're just different. You know, right. you, you avoid them if you if you want to. Well, you know, as a 12, 13 year old kid getting to know Carl. Uh, you know, the compassion that can change. Sometimes, sometimes that person has went through something also. Mm, uh, that's right. Just because they're a little different. They might be a little different because they're in a depression. They might be a little different because they grew up different than you. They might not be, you know, as blessed as you are as far as, you know, having a, a place to live, a, a food on the table every day. You know, making them different don't mean that it's bad. They're just not like you. And, and a lot of people avoid people because of yeah. that, because they're different. Well, Carl shows us that differences sometimes can bring people together and you learn from each other and you take experiences from each other and both both parties come out better. Well, wow. what so, a uh, what a concept that our uh, I think our country could uh, take in uh, today. Wow, couldn't it? Yeah, couldn't it? yeah. So, that's 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 incredible. Yeah, well, Carl's my favorite one. It's it's, uh, it's a story of compassion and it shows how the innocence of a child can can bring someone that's a little different in and make them welcomed into a new family. And, yes. uh, you know, it changes their world. It changes their experience also because they've got a newfound compassion for Christ because somebody did take the time to say, Hey, I, I love you. Well, wow. that's a, uh, that's, that's incredible. And, uh, I love the concept of the mindset and heart of a child and the innocence of a child and the, um, the showing the compassion of Christ and, uh, man, literally it's cool. You brought that up last night when, uh, I was preaching to our students. Uh, we talked about in Colossians chapter three, where Paul writes, he talks about putting on yeah. compassion. You know, we need to take off the old self, put on compassion, humility, kindness, uh, and those things. And so, man, what a, what an incredible, incredible story an incredible book, uh, everyone. And, uh, I hope you'll go get it. You can get it, uh, wherever books are sold. It's called lessons from a Southern upbringing, Southern roots, uh, by Mr. Russell Estes. And what we're going to do, uh, as soon as we're done with this video, uh, it'll be uploaded to YouTube and, uh, we hope you will check it out, but all the links for, 
Uh, we'll put the Amazon link and the Facebook page link where you can go grab a copy of his book. I'd highly encourage you to do so. And uh, so, Mr. Russell, before we go, is there anything else you'd like to leave our listeners with? Uh, the only thing I would say is, you know, if you're if you want to do something like this, this book, this has been a thought of mine. I'd say go for it. Yeah. You know, I've, I've talked to since I put this out, I've talked to two or three other people said, man, I've always wanted to do that. but I didn't know where to get started. Uh, I'd say go for it. You'll find Start. your way. A, a simple Google search uh, find your way. Uh, your book inspired me. I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, when, when I asked you to come out and speak to my group, how many years ago? Four or five years yeah. ago, I guess. Yeah, something like that. That was inspiring. That was inspiring. I sat down and I've read your book two or three times and I've, I've bought a few copies and gave them away to other people because I was like, man, you got to read this. Yeah. But I, I say go for it. Not, not necessarily because of you're wanting to accomplish something. But if you can put something in the book that will help others mm. or something in the book that might lead someone else to Christ, there's no, it's a ripple effect. That's Drop right. a stone in the water. You never know how far the ripples are going to go. That's right. And I, I say that, you know, if you feel like that, that's something you want to do, do it because that could be God's call. It couldn't Absolutely. just be something you're wanting to do, but if God's pushing you to do something, do it. Don't fight it. Do it. Mm. Do it. That's, that's the one thing I can, that I got out of this book. If you're going to do something, do it do it and just start hey start somewhere uh and get man there. you get you might hit the lead a few times like yeah, i did yeah that's right but, <laughs> but start hey, you know it starts you yeah. gotta start somewhere that's right well guys thank you so much thank you russell and everyone listening we hope you will check out the book we hope you uh check everything out mr russell's doing we'll put uh, all the links on the on this video uh and guys thank you so much for listening today we hope you'll subscribe and share this video with a friend thank you so much for listening the Talking with Taylor podcast. Taylor. Yes, sir. Uh -huh.